Ladies and gentlemen, we had a absolutely fantastic fight night last night. Gervonta Davis fighting Frank Martin. Obviously, the UFC was dead. I don't know what that was about, but boxing absolutely delivered another fantastic fight from Gervonta Davis. Obviously, Frank Martin, great 18-0, undefeated record. Not the most active guy, obviously, in his, in his pro career. I think that that's what a lot of people have always said, that they wish he fought more. I'm one of them. But obviously, it put him in a position, a huge spotlight on him against a guy in Gervonta Davis. But guys, what happened in this fight? First things first. First three rounds, honestly, I will say, Frank Martin looked good. You know, he was jabbing well. He was moving effectively. He made it work. But... I can't really give a guy too much praise when your first three rounds are beating Tank Davis because Tank Davis loses every single first three rounds of like pretty much every single one of his fights. He just builds throughout the fight because he is so good at making reads and making adjustments against his opponents. And that was exactly what happened here. Obviously, Frank Martin was moving well and he was landing shots that he needed to land earlier on in the fight. But the problem was is people forget just how dangerous a counterpuncher Tank Davis is. This is the thing when you're fighting a guy in Gervonta that you have to notice. As we can see right here, when you throw punches at a guy like Gervonta, you can't overcommit to those punches, which means that you're forced as a fighter not to throw with power. Canelo versus Kovalev is a great example of this. Kovalev did not throw with power at all throughout the entirety of the fight. Because when you do, watch what happens. Catch and a huge shot is going to come back your way. So obviously, that forces a guy like Frank Martin to not overcommit to his shots, which means that he can't really throw with power. So immediately, you're relegated to having to try to win the fight on points, whereas your opponent, Gervonta, can just absolutely march forward and land bombs of his own. That immediately sets a precedent when you're fighting a guy with as much power as Tank Davis that he's going to be able to walk you down with pressure because you can't overcommit to your shots, so he can wear a lot of the shots that you're throwing on his guard. And Gervonta realized that. Around the fourth, fifth round, Gervonta realizes that and he was able to just really start marching down his opponent. He was landing good counter shots, as you can see right there. Good shots over this slip. Boom! Big right hands. He's able to land these shots because his opponent can't commit to his punches. First things first, guys. You know, Frank Martin is known as being super fast, having super, super fast hands. Ryan Garcia is known for having super, super fast hands. Tank Davis has now starched both of those guys. He knocked out Frank Martin cold. He obviously knocked, he stopped Ryan Garcia as well. And then when we look at how these fights have aged, Ryan Garcia goes on. Obviously, he cheated, so his win doesn't count. But a bit of Austrian doesn't make you twice as good as a fighter, <laughs> obviously. He still was able to put it on Devin Haney. So just how fast is Tank Davis? The thing is, is Tank has such an awkward style where he's just kind of walking his opponents down that people don't realize just how fast this guy is. He is incredibly fast. And not only is he incredibly fast, but he lands with incredible power. Look at those shots. I mean, absolutely thudding blows, huge shot over top. These shots are so different from the shots that were coming back from Frank Martin. And that was just kind of the tale of this this fight, right? Frank could not commit because the counters are just too dangerous from Gervonta Davis. And after Gervonta was able to leave that threat there open for him, Martin wasn't able to make the adjustments that Tank Davis was able to make. He had one game plan, and that was the game plan that he tried to enact. And as you can see here, Gervonta, even, even though the shots are getting landed against him, they're just doing nothing to him. They're doing nothing to him. They're not preventing him from walking his opponent forward. And that was kind of the whole tale of this fight. When you have a fighter that has the power, but also has the speed, it's going to come down to who's able to solve the puzzle better. Who's able to solve the puzzle of each other's styles defensively that's able to win the fight in the long term. And Gervonta has done that every single time. He's able to figure out his opponent every single time. And then he just walks them down. Right? As you can see here. 
what's, what's Frank Martin going to do there? Nothing. He's in the corner and he's getting beat up. So that was going to be the tail of the tape. But obviously, unfortunately for him, it didn't last much longer than this with this huge right hand just putting him completely to sleep. Guys, I don't want to go too much into detail over this fight because, frankly, it's a pretty clear-cut case of Tank Davis being the better fighter. But I wanted to mention that I think that even though this guy is at the top of the boxing game and has been for a while, people are still underestimating him. This is a guy in his prime, 29 years of age. People are forgetting he's a bit older than I think people think he is. In his prime, top 10 pound for pound, no question. Probably a lot of people's top five. And he's absolutely at the peak of the sport. He is so talented. He is so good. 30-0, and 0, 28 knockouts. He is someone that has to be really, in my opinion, considered at the top of the game as far as boxing goes. And I hope that that's what we get to see. I hope that that's what we get to see him fighting the best of the best. I hope that he fights the fights that he needs to fight soon here that are really going to cement his legacy as one of the best in the sport. But man. What an absolutely phenomenal fighter. Let me know in the comments what you guys thought. Obviously, I feel like we all tuned into that boxing match instead of whatever the UFC put on last night. I don't even know what the hell that was about. <laughs> Thanks so much, guys. Take it easy. This is Roundhouse Radio. Peace.